101.7 The Fox. I'm Scott Les. We are live inside of the Les's More Lounge looking forward to an amazing rock show tonight as the Fox welcomes Power Man 5000. Back yeah. to Sonoma County. Here with the front man, the man behind the plane. Wow. Spider One. So I just woke up and realized <laughs> that I, Yeah, thank you very much. It's a beautiful morning here. And it's a lovely Santa Rosa. And that is where we are. Today. That's exactly where we are. Congratulations on what is the new release? Yes. The latest from Power Man 5000. Somewhere on the other side of nowhere. Is yes. there a specific process that you go through on the making of a new Power Man CD, or do you kind of scrap what you do before and, and try to do things a different way in a different the direction? The process? Uh, we pick a bunch of songs to rip off. And then we, <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, there's really no. Well, I mean, I guess there was a specific. You know, let's get some, let's getting some vibes from this. Yeah. Um, this is radio, so they can't see what What is he holding right now? <laughs> they only knew. That's why you look so happy. Um, anyway, no, this record, what we kind of wanted to do with this record is sort of go back to, I guess, what we're most known for, which is that sort of electronics meets metal. You know, our big record was uh, Tonight the Stars of Vault. That was way back in 99. And that was sort of our big, you know, got on MTV and had songs on the radio. And that was sort of what everybody figured out. And so we've, we've experimented and diverted and tried different things over the years, but this is sort of a conscious effort to get back to that sound. And it's working. I mean, the fans have been like, wow, thanks. Like, this is what you guys should have been doing for the past five years. And I, it's funny how your fans sort of always know better than you do. You know? <laughs> sure, absolutely. I think you know, like, oh, I'm gonna take this turn and be really creative. And everyone's like, no, 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 just do the same thing. And so that's what we did. But I, I think this is really like, I don't know, I'm sort of more excited about this record than I've been about what? anything we've done yeah. so, And it's good. I mean, I think it's like probably our best thing we've ever done. Everybody always says that. And I've said that before. <laughs> it's absolutely our best record. And we know it's not. But I really do think this one is. You know, I feel like we've learned a lot. We sort of take all the things that we do best and we sort of credit it to ourselves. We're live right now with Spider One from Power Man 5000 and talking about one of the tremendous tracks off the latest CD, Somewhere on the Other Side of Nowhere. I want to play this one. This is Super Villain. This is Power Man 5000 on the Fox. We'll play that and we'll come back in three, two, one. 101.7 The Fox, that's what I'm talking about. A tremendous track from Power Man 5000. Yes. That is Super Villain in studio right now with Spider One, the front man from Power Man playing live yes. tonight at the last day salute. Super Villain. That, that's that, a great track. That is a party. <laughs> it is a I mean, party. That's like a, it's a party. That's what I do. When we're making a record, that's, if a song feels like a party, then it's going on. Then it absolutely yeah. has to be on. To me, it's like an evil, dark, sinister party. And you are a guy who is so busy, and not only being a musician and front man for Power Man 5000, but you also have your own record label. Well, yeah, sort of. Can we call it a label? Is it really just an I don't think there are record labels anymore. I mean, it, I started that label a while ago when we were on DreamWorks, and it was really imprinted DreamWorks. And then I quickly realized that, that I don't want a record label. And now I have one. <laughs> I don't really use that. Doesn't every kid need one? I feel like I have a logo. You know what I mean? But really, do I really want to put out <laughs> records? No. You know, I don't want to put out other people's records. So you're not really looking, searching out new talent, Hell finding no. a band, and I was, what, what, a competition? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like all the other bands to go away. So we, <laughs> One band left to remain yeah, standing. Exactly. So no, but for a while I was pretty active in that. But you know, I think a lot of I think a lot of bands think that's exciting. Like they get success. And like, wouldn't it be great to have your own record label? You realize no. It's not. I think maybe it, lots of people think that as a musician and a guy who searches out, searches out new talent, that maybe you've, you've discovered something that we right. haven't seen, and it fits kind of what you envision as, as what you're, one of your favorite yeah. musical sounds. But you know, that was sort of the idea, was to find some cool bands. But But I do a lot of other things too, so I am a very busy. Exactly. I was, was going to ask you about being a correspondent. Yeah, I do what you do. I do some stuff for this thing called FearNet, which is just really cool. Uh, it's, a, it's a website, but it's also an on-demand cable thing. They, they have 24 hours of free streaming horror movies, and they send me out to uh, events and red carpets and press junkets. It's way better than what I do. It's cool, you know, because, you know, it's, it's, you know I mean, I, always, I was that kid. I grew up on like, like, comic books and science fiction and horror movies, so I go and, like, talk to people I grew up loving. Like I just interviewed George Romero, you know, director of Night of the Living Absolutely. Dead. And, you know, all that stuff. That, those are movies that shaped my warped existence today. So that's pretty That's pretty fun game. You know? Is there any new horror movies that you've seen that you can kind of uh, treat us to? Well, it's interesting. I haven't seen it yet, but somebody just gave me a copy of Human Centipede, 
Have you heard about this? I video? have not. And I don't know if I can describe <laughs> it not. on air. But I'm going to try without bleeping it. Apparently, it's uh, it's really pretty twisted. I haven't seen it in the last they uh, It's about this like, crazy evil doctor, scientist who kidnaps, I think, eight or nine people to create a human centipede. And well, how he does this is he sews them together mouth to. Can you say butthole on, the, on sure, the air? Absolutely. Mouth to butthole, and creating a chain of people that relieve themselves through <laughs> the butthole into the mouth <laughs> and through that person. And out, you know, you're, you're getting the visual. Oh, I've got it, yeah. So, <laughs> this is a human centipede. So, I can't vouch yes, that it's any good. <laughs> but, I am watch, but, you know, with a premise like that, how can you go wrong? So, we're going to watch that one tonight. <laughs> Cannot wait for the movie review of yeah. the Human Center. Yeah, it's and it's an illegal DVD. Now, so <laughs> cool Do you get a lot of response yeah. when you're out and about and people are using their iPhones and taking pictures of the show and kind of yeah. using new technology to kind of... Yeah, I mean, look, we, you know, for better or worse, I mean, we'll play a show right. and literally by the time we get back on the bus, there's a video from the show up on YouTube. <laughs> Amazing. And sometimes it's, you know, cringe because it's... They, happen to catch that one moment when you fall down or you make a mistake and you see the lyrics. And like, Thanks. <laughs> you, know, you couldn't have picked the other hour of the show that went smoothly. You had to put that on. But it's cool, yeah, I mean it's you know it's weird. It's like you sort of lose control. You know, it used to be rock and roll is very weird. Like it's mystique, you know, like you saw a picture of your favorite band on their album cover and maybe you saw them once a year and come through town, but now it's just like Photo, and video, and you know everywhere. So you've sort of lost a little of that, but you gain that in the way that the accessibility of the band, which I think is kind of cool for people. You know, Absolutely, I think your fan base who misses out on the show tonight, you know, they're no matter where they are in the whole world, they can you know participate. Yeah, it's funny. It's like I, you know, when I was a kid, I went to a concert. I never expected to meet the band. You know, I'd go see the show and go home. And now it's like. If the band doesn't come out and shake That's everybody's absolutely. hand, you're a complete jerk off. You know, they all hate you and they're writing about it every day. So there's a different like expectation I think now. And I, I think you're right, and I think the expectation comes from, from some bands who kind of have to do it all themselves. You know, that there is no massive kind of record yeah, that's that, going out and making that happen. So these bands that blow up on MySpace and on YouTube that they go out and they meet their fan base, and it's the best way to kind of create passion. You are now expected to not only be in a band, but be your marketing and your publicist and you know, I mean we you know, we essentially do everything ourselves as well, you know what I mean? And uh, but we kind of always have, you know, it's like I think this misconception that a record label somehow does stuff for you. You know, they don't really they give you they usually give you a little money and then they and make they up excuses why nothing's working. <laughs> Is that what they do? Yeah, that's pretty much my experience anyway. You know. We don't know, you know. We thought we had a smash. We like to use words like undeniable, <laughs> undeniable hit, and then it doesn't become a hit. Oh, especially unbelievable! Yeah, we're talking with Spider One from Power Man Five Thousand. Of course, the band plays live tonight at the Last Day Saloon. And, and before I I'll let you go, uh, talking about you guys, the historical part of how you guys began. If you were to give some some advice to up and coming bands, yeah. to kind of create some kind of longevity, do you have any? Uh, that's a, that's thoughts a really tough up? one because it used to be a simple path, you know. You, started a band and you played a bunch of shows and developed a following to sort of maybe maneuver yourself to get a record deal, put a record out and try to get on radio and MTV. And that was kind of it, you know. And now, there are no record labels, you know, and MTV doesn't play music and radio has become playlists become smaller and smaller. So I think the first part still makes sense. Start a band and play a bunch of shows and try to become really good. And because that's all you that's all you have, you know. And that's the same with us, you know, it's like it's sort of it's come full circle, it's become back it come back to that. How do you just be a good band, you know? And I think the live show is ultimately what will, you know, hopefully make you stick around for